this is this is this is Well, uh, dude, thanks for taking the time. Mike Kennedy, the great Mike Kennedy. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Looking good. But I am Mike Kennedy. <laughs> I had no idea that, you know, I kind of, you've been on my radar a little bit because of Screech and Weasel, um, which I love their last record, by the way. Um, freaks dude, of... thank you for singing on it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was, I was honored. Uh, you know, growing, they always say like teenage me or whatever, but like I remember and I've talked about this before, but I remember just going to, you know, the job site with my buddy. You know, we were working these these rental properties where we'd have to like do all the landscaping for these rental properties, and uh, Screech and Weasel. You know, that was one of that summer. I was just jam. I mean, we were jamming a lot of stuff. You know, Lagwag and other things, but like Screech and Weasel, and then the Queers, and that led me to the Queers and all this other stuff. So like, the genre that you, you've been very very busy busy in. What is, what is that genre of punk? Do they call that? What is that? The uh, the Ramones, the Ramones si style of punk rock. Like, whenever I'm like t describing what to do to uh, like what kind of song it is to to my guys in MXPX, if it's like mid tempo, da -na -na -na, one th you know one four five something like that, I'll just say yeah, it's like Ramones style. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. I always just still say pop punk, even though that's become so. A million other things these days. Yeah, true. I don't know, true. That, that's what I always called it back then and still say. But Melodic yeah, punk, it, pop punk, it all works. Totally. Dude, well, yeah, good work. You've been, you've been producing and making records for a lot of bands, but you're also, for those that don't know, you play guitar in the All-American Rejects. Yep. And uh, we've spent a lot of time with you guys on, t on, on Warp Tour, you know, but... But, uh, you know, looking back, going back through some of your catalog, it's like, yep, know that one. Yep, I know that one. There's, <laughs> there's so many good songs you guys have. So, uh, Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. So what do you, yeah, you guys been up to? What, do you, what have you been up to? Uh, well, me, it's mostly the recording stuff. Uh, just doing a lot of that, staying busy, either producing or mixing and stuff. Just did, just finished a new Screeching Weasel, actually. Um, just got that back from what? Astrum the other day. <laughs> That's insane. That's quick. That's a quick turnaround. Yeah, he was he was amped. I think the last the the fact that people seem to really dig the last record kind of like got him a little more jazzed. And, um, so it's fun. And I and I'm technically a member on this one. So oh, sweet. That's kind of fun. Like and like you're saying, like the teenage you. Like for me, it's like, holy shit! I'm listed as a guitar player on a Screeching Weasel record. That's, yeah, that's insane. Let's talk more about <laughs> Screeching Weasel. I mean, like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listening to, you know, their last records, Freaks of Atavism, uh, you put it on and right away it sounds like this, it sounds better than, than it was, you know, than their old records, but like it fits within the, the, the canon of Screeching Weasel. So like for, for those that care about that kind of thing, it, it really fits, but like how does, how do you guys keep coming up with ideas that that are similar yet totally new and totally like I'm into it. I guess my point is is I put on that record and I've been a fan of that record for a while, but I put it on t just today and I was just like, yeah, this is just this is right there. It's quality. And anybody that's a Screeching Weasel fan or a fan of pop punk or this style of music, you know, I can't believe that they made a record this good right now, you know. So so congrats to Ben. Um but now you you guys made a new record, so that's going to be old news pretty soon. And, and I'm sure that this new record's better than that record, in some well, ways, I mean, right? It, 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 you know, I think it all just comes down to to Ben's songwriting, really. And he he takes it serious, you know, like he really works on the songs and refines them, and wants to just make himself a better songwriter and not kind of rest on his own laurels. And so I think that's why, you know it is unexpected that 20 years later he could still be making a record that's like as good as stuff he made in the nineties. Um, yes. but I, I think that's the main thing it comes down to. And then, uh, and then he's very open to like everyone else in the band contributing ideas and, you know, adding those, all those little things that add up to like, you know, a better record in the end. I was thinking about that. Actually, I was listening to listening to freaks of Atavism. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, it's a weird word, um, but, uh, 
I was listening to that today, and I was like, I was thinking that exact thing. I was like, Ben is smart because he surrounds himself with like somebody like you, you know, that's really kind of hands on. Let's try this. Let's try this. Making the record. I I, I feel that with with Ben so much. Like he it's some kind of the same way he does business in in a lot of ways, but but just getting he's okay with people adding to what he's done like he's he's taken this idea presented it it's going to be a screeching weasel song so i mean obviously there's somewhat parameters you know there's cer there's certain but but at the same time you can make a guitar sound so many different ways right and it still yeah. works within punk rock uh but i liked i noticed i'm similar to that i, I noticed that he obviously lets you guys add things here and there because I hear things and I'm like, okay, I bet he didn't necessarily tell you guys to do that. And then there's probably other things where you're like, here's the riff, goes exactly like this, play the exact – it can go both ways, right? Am I right or am I totally wrong? No, no, totally. Yeah, like what he presents is usually a demo, just him and guitar and just, you know, power chords. And, and then when it gets to like the weasel leads, he'll have those written. Right. Um, but well, then but after as far that, as drums and stuff like – are the drums not written? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly how I do it too. It, and it's great. Yeah. So he lets everyone do it. And he, 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 I think he knows that he knows that other people will come up with ideas he won't think of. Yeah. And just, and, you know, better the songs. Which I is think great. so. I think so a lot. I think, uh, you know, especially, you know, somebody in Ben's position, you know, being kind of the, the, the main person, you know, the main songwriter, um, you, you can kind of just become like a solo songwriter, you know, and a lot of people do do just solo punk rock, full band stuff. All they do all the instruments and it's cool, but there's something that changes when you add a band. I mean, it literally is called a band for reasons, you know, you band <laughs> together and it really does make a huge difference. So even though like I, I would say this to, to the listeners, you know, if you have a band and you're frustrated with like one of your people not doing it well, well, like you don't necessarily want it to be perfect all the time, right? Like you can easily auto tune every background vocal and lead vocal into oblivion and it becomes smaller and smaller and less real, you know? Um, but yeah, there's just something about you add people together and little things me as you know as a weirdo you know i hear something and i want to hear it the way i wrote it right but sometimes you have to let that go and you have to go you know what that's actually something i never would have done and i like that i'm gonna, totally. I'm gonna let that <laughs> sorry and that's what i love like, therapy as, session like for me. producer on this stuff you know having worked with ben for so long now and done so many records it's like you know, we have an idea of what a Screeching Weasel record is, but then like the other guitar player, Mike Hunchback, he comes in and he's got all these like surf influences and just these things that he brings to the table where like when he starts playing shit, I'm like, oh, that's amazing. Like I would have never thought to do that. And that's, those are those special moments that I love making a record. And, and I really do think kind of pushes things over the top. It's great. Absolutely. So you, you look and sound pretty stoked about life. <laughs> so like you're coming off this like high of like I just made it I just was part of the band and the producer of this this new record. That's got to feel pretty good. It's it's exciting, you know, like I it doesn't get old, you know, like I, I grew up listening to Weasel too and so like still recording him going to his basement and recording his vocals. It's just like, "Ah, oh, man, that's fucking Ben Weasel right there singing these songs like 10 feet away. It's great." I think uh I think there's there's something to this. I think um bands like Screech and Weasel, they're going to not slow down. They're going to speed up because there's less shows going on, because there's mm -hmm. new ways of, of working on these records. Uh, did Ben come come down to Oklahoma and sing anything? No, I, I, I went up there. Went Everyone up. else came here, but I went up to Wisconsin and did his <laughs> Okay. <laughs> of course, <laughs> as you should. <laughs> that's, you know. That's, what was the that's... recording set up up at his, was it at his house? Yeah, yeah. I just I drove up and uh, I brought like you know a compressor and an e and a uh, and a mic pre and and then he actually has an SM7 which works great and uh, and that's it. Yeah, and have an interface and just did it in his basement. Oh, that's dope. That's fun. Yeah. I mean, and and yeah. that's the thing is you can make records like that nowadays. Totally. We. Yeah, it's super easy. Any technical issues when you got up there? Was was the computer ever messed up or was there no, no. crashes? 
Thankfully, I mean, my computer's it's like three or four years old at this point, but it's still holding up pretty good. No and ground yeah, no, issues, buzz, buzz noises or anything. No, I just had to turn off his like furnace so it yeah. didn't hum. But like, other than that, no, and like, uh, oh, what was I gonna say? Yeah, like, uh, oh shit, I had something in my head and now I lost it. That's all right. Something about the technical things. Well, yeah, I mean, doing, but yeah. The, the reason I ask is because like it seems like every time we do any recording session, it could be like for a record, it could be for one song. Um, all of a sudden our computer stops working correctly, you know, like Pro Tools is crashing or, or um, you know, we have this buzz, like why do we have a buzz? And the new one was the other day, um, I couldn't get stereo in my headphone mix. And I'm like, what is, like I tried everything. I'm like unplugging the patch bay, this, that. And it turns out it was the headphone cable like what <laughs> just like um, i changed headphones amp using the same pair of headphones every time I'm like no i am an idiot nice. but we figured it out yeah nice things like oh that. that's what i was gonna say was i made sure and i froze all the tracks prior to going so that was the other thing that helped make sure everything ran smooth what do you it's mean like, by froze i think i know what you mean consolidated or what, well, what do you, uh, what there's do you actually like a in Pro Tools, uh, on each track, you can there's like the little like it looks like an asterisk. If you hit that, it'll essentially prints all the tracks, but in a temporary form. Okay, so, so it plays it'll play it, but you can't move anything unless you unfreeze. Yeah, and so when it I mean when it freezes, it unloads all the processing, so it's like no longer ha using the plugins and stuff. Okay, but you're still hearing what you had going. Excellent. See, I know Pro Tools, and I just didn't know that. Cause I it's, have, it's a uh, feature that only came a couple of years ago. But. Okay. I have, we have, uh, two thousand. so we have Pro Tools 12, I guess that would be the last number mm -hmm. version. And then they, they moved to years, right? Yeah. I think it's in 12, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it's real helpful for Is like it in that 12? Kind of I'll check it out. Thing. I mean, there's plenty that I don't know about in Pro Tools right now, you know? So, <laughs> you know, it's one of those things where I used to be on Pro Tools all the time recording other bands, just like you, you know? And then just over the years, just MXPX got so busy, I stopped doing that. And I just haven't really gone back. It's been just me still just doing random things. And then between that, between MXPX and then on the side, I got Goldfinger. Um, all I really need to know how to do is record a vocal fairly simply. You know, just record, <laughs> record another one, record another one, you know, make a comp maybe. Uh, and, and yeah, I mean, I, I love it. You know, I love knowing how to do my own stuff. Like that has probably been one of the best parts about having a studio, about, you know, learning how to, to engineer is just not having to like rely on other people, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's real nice. Uh, that was, and yeah, I don't know. It's just, that's something that's definitely like grabbed a hold of me from a nerdy standpoint of just... Like, I love it. It's like playing a video game for me. Right, right. <laughs> there you go. It kinda, it's going to be more and more like that as the future rolls on. And <laughs> That's true. Things get crazy. But so let's talk, before we get too far into the future, let's talk about, I want to know how you got into recording. Like, was it before or after you started playing guitar with the Rejects? Uh, what's the timelines there? Yeah, it was, it was probably 2003-ish. So I was already playing with the Rejects. And that was like right around when, at least when I first heard about uh, inboxes. Oh, and yeah. Our other yeah. guitar player had one. And I was like, oh, shit, I can like write and demo something. And so that, that was the beginning of it. And just kind of snowballed from there because, you know, that's it was a perfect gateway. You know, they get you with two tracks. And yep. You always need <laughs> most, more than that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, it was just that from there and then just kept growing. Why did you Why did you do it? Were you Was it mainly for songwriting purposes with the Rejects, uh, demoing those guys? Like, did, have you ever recorded any Reject stuff, or is that always um, a different producer? Yeah, it's always a different producer. I mean, we've done a couple like one off songs where we'll remotely record stuff and then put it all together. But uh, no, yeah, it was just for like just creative fun sake, really. Just okay. Write. And stuff. What, and what yeah. was the session you did with the rejects that maybe like taught you the most about, okay, now I'm going to go and really do this. Well, when we recorded move along, just watching, cause we did that with Howard Benson and just watching how, you know, his engineer, Mike Plotnikoff and, uh, 
just how everything worked, you know, with that. And that was the first time like really seeing like they had, you know, a dedicated Pro Tools guy who like, as soon as we did right. any takes, they handed it off to him and he was like in a closet in another room in the studio. And just, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and and just watching it, you know, they operated very much like in an assembly line kind of way, mm -hmm. which I'd never seen. And which I don't necessarily think necessarily think is maybe the best thing sometimes, but it was very interesting to see and just like seeing all this gear and all this stuff. And, you know, you I see, wish at the time. Oh, yeah, you sorry, see that you see the possibilities, right? Yeah, totally. You wish and, it. Sorry, I cut you off. You wished at the time. Oh, what? Like, uh, like Chris Lord Algae mixed that record, but I was just getting into recording. So like we were there with him every day but I didn't have like the knowledge yet to really take in or be able to ask him questions. And now I'd be like, fuck to be able to be in a room with him for two weeks straight. And, yeah. But yeah. But that kind of just got all the wheels rolling. I, I'm exactly in the same position. He mixed uh, a record for us or he half of a record for us. And we were in there and he was showing us mixes and stuff, but I didn't, that was like right when pro tools, like it was our first record. We recorded to pro tools before everything. And after is the record. And, uh, yeah, it sounded amazing, but it was like I didn't know what to ask him or like what to like. Everything was real secret too. You know, I've mm. I've heard that like he doesn't he doesn't tell anybody what compressor compression he's using and stuff like that. Now he's got all totally. these plugins, you know, like on Waves plugins. Like you can just turn the knob up and there's your Chris Lord algae mix. Boom. <laughs> but I'm with you. I'm with you. Like right around then started learning how to record. So how many different iterations, was it always Pro Tools for you or did you learn, did you do any recording prior to Pro Tools? No, nothing that I did, you know, like I was in other bands and, you know, we're in the nineties did the eight at thing and, yeah, but I yeah. never ran it or really knew what was going on, I guess. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. So Pro Tools is my only thing that I've ever had, which is, it's funny. Cause like for me, like I have, everything is such a, like a, uh, like, like I don't have a board. Like everyone, you know, like people will get boards and stuff once they really get into this. But I'm like, man, I've always just used the computer for mixing and everything. And it's like I don't need that tactile thing. Like I have all my outboard stuff for like pre's and some compressors and whatnot. But I'm just very much just like if you, I don't know. Like yeah, I'm a, I've always been a Pro Tools guy. And yeah. so now when like too, when I see a lot of people using Logic and shit, I'm like. Do I have to learn? Oh, this? no. <laughs> it is so different. Like, I, yeah. I I, don't, I have logic as well, and I'm like, I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> it's like too easy or something. Like, it's so easy that you can't figure it out. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Like, there's just things I'm like, wait, why, why can't I do this? And I was like, I know there's got to be a way, but yeah, it's weird. So, you know, we, for a time, you know, here at the studio, Monkey Trench, we, uh, we didn't have a console, and it was fine. You know, it was, it was, you know, there were some things about it that were different than how we have now. So, like, now we have just a Soundcraft console where before we had, like, a, a higher-end, like, a Neotech Elite, and it was, like, really nice. Uh, the Soundcraft's great, actually. It does it does its thing, and it's it's been mm. modded, so it kind of it sounds better than your average. And it's, it's anything vintage, anything old, if it works, usually sounds pretty good compared to, like, a yeah. lot of the – a lot of the cheaper models of like a console you could buy right now. Um, now, if we're talking Mackie, I think Mackie has been pretty good, like across the board. You know, we used to use Mackie back when we first started, and we still use Mackie for a bunch of things here. So it's kind of like nice. those are technology is always getting better, even even though I prefer usually like an older console or something, but. The reason why it doesn't matter for you is because you're not necessarily broadcasting. I feel like when you're broadcasting, it matters a bit. Um, mm. What I mean by that is like we've been doing these live streams and we're using the console to mix everything down. So it's like separate mm. from Pro Tools. We're recording it totally. to, to Pro Tools, but we have a totally separate mix that's analog. It's not like if somebody bumps it, you got to fix that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's very antiquated, but... Uh, I think at some point we might have to go back to, you know, your setup. Like, so what kind of, what kind of computer do you use? You use Mac? Yeah, I actually, uh, like maybe two years ago got just a mini and it a works Mac great. Mini. I used to have, you know, I used to have a big pro and once it, or, uh, yeah. 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 I know what you mean. Like a yeah. Mac pro. Uh, yeah. I, 
same thing except for we don't have it we have a mini right here for our broadcasting stuff but we don't have one yet on the the computer upstairs but after <laughs> after the last year we've had of of like a few of our broadcasts um the broadcast never goes down because it's on a separate computer but on our pro tools upstairs it would just like stop recording and freeze up so we lost a couple of our multi-track recordings i'm just like that is just like ah oh, so frustrating to lose yeah. you can't go back and redo that it's done it's done it's you know it is what it is but so yeah my my whole point in all this is not to complain but just to say i think it's time for a mac mini <laughs> And it, it's great. It's so funny, too, because it's like the footprint of it's so tiny compared to that other thing. But it's so much more reliable and faster. Right. <laughs> solid. Crazy right? How... It, technology. Yeah. Uh, and way cheaper, too, which is nice. But uh, it's been great for me so far. Of course, I, I don't do any like video stuff. You know, I'm just audio. So I don't know if that would bog it down more. Probably. You probably get a different I... get a whole new Mac Mini for that. Yeah. But for what I use it for, it's been amazing. That's awesome. That's cool. I mean, have you been able to like this is your full time job, just producing records, engineering, mixing? Pretty. I mean, especially since COVID. Aside from, I mean, <laughs> obviously, aside. I don't mean, <laughs> I don't mean to besmirch the rejects. I mean, aside no, no, from no. the rejects and, and when you're not touring with them. Yeah. No. I mean, this is definitely what I've been doing with most of my time the past couple of years. Um, even, even when the rejects were still playing shows, you know, like we're, we, we pretty much have just been, you know, one offs for a few years now. So yeah, most of my time is just mixing or recording. Yeah. What does everybody else do in the band, you know, on time off? Um, well, Tyson does like acting stuff too. Okay. Um, and then Nick, he's in Nashville and he's doing like songwriting and, and producing stuff. And, uh, and Chris kind of just does a lot of different things. He's, yeah. Uh, he's the wild card. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, everybody always needs a drummer. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, and that's going to translate into the studio as well. But, um, that's cool. You know, it's cool that you guys all have something you do. I, Tyson is just funny. He's a funny guy. You know, it seems like mm -hmm. he'd be a great, great actor, great Hollywood kind of guy. But, um, I, I just love that that you've been making so many of, of these records. Like you've been working with Mass Intruder, friends of mine, uh, Direct Hit, also friends. We're working with them on, uh, you know, I can't even say that. It's a secret. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> beep, beep, beep. Oh, I'll edit it. Uh, we have a secret. I don't know if you know. You probably don't know about that. But, uh, yeah, we're working with them on something cool. Um, nice. And the copyrights, yeah, that's a, you know, copyrights red city radio you know just so many bands the, a vulture wake i saw that on your on your instagram you just finished up recording those guys yeah actually just finished probably tonight be finishing mixes awesome that, awesome so, yeah it's cool yeah it's like you know when, whenever i like delve deeper into something like who's who's in vulture awake it's like somebody from mag seven it's like oh it's people that have been around it's it's uh you mm -hmm. know chad price awesome <laughs> Which another another amazing thing to be in a room recording that yeah. voice, you know? Yeah. That's how is Chad? Okay, if, I don't know. If we should talk about his talk about him behind his back. But like, how is he to record? <laughs> like, what is it like? What does he prefer? Does he have like a dry vocal, no reverb, or a lot of reverb? Like, let's talk. Let's talk um, about it. Shoot, I keep hitting. My yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> it was uh, it was just dry. Yeah, he didn't ask for anything on it. I don't think. Uh, and he was super. I mean, he's one of the best singers I've ever recorded. Like just so just emotive and his pitch is amazing. And like definitely one of the easiest recording experiences with a singer and wow, the, by far the loudest singer I've ever recorded. It was that dude has volume in spades. It's crazy. Um, awesome yeah, it was hear. awesome. That's awesome to He's hear. Super chill, dude. It was great. It's, it's funny because I like, a lot of reverb on my vocal when I sing. I don't like to listen back with a lot of reverb. I'll, I'll listen dry. I don't care. But, but I like when I sing to have a lot of reverb. And aside from that, you know, a fairly normal mix, you know, like whatever mm -hmm. it is. But some people are weird. Like some people want, I mean, maybe I'm weird, but some people want like literally no guitars, only, mm -hmm. only like maybe like one little reference thing or whatever. Um, I don't know. What 
Have you have you come across any weirdness? People wanting weird things in their headphone monitor. <laughs> Not particularly. Like it, I don't know if that's just like a weird coincidence, but no, everyone's been very just normal stuff. You know, like I don't even know. Like I'm trying to think of anyone even asking for reverb most of the time. They're here's, just singing dry. Here's something that I do a lot. And I started doing this with like doubles, you know, when you sing to yourself, a double. Well, I started singing that way to for leads. So I would like sing it and then sing it again and then sing it again. You know, I like sing it to myself. And then if I like sing it better, I'll sing it to that one. And, I, and that way yeah. I'm like concentrating more on emoting the right feeling and not mm -hmm. worrying as much about pitch because you, I can follow my pitch. I wonder, and some people hate that. Some people are like, that makes me, drives me crazy. Uh, <laughs> like Tom Wisniewski, our guitar player, hates doing that. He just wants to sing to himself. But I just wonder mm -hmm. if anybody has ever done that for you, like if you've ever done that at all. No, I mean, that, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, especially like when you think about, you hear the stories about like in the 80s and they'd bring in like a session singer to sing the part so that the singer could then sing along to it and get yeah. the pitch right. Like, That's basically you know, what that it is. I, and I do yeah. that sometimes. It sometimes it's not uh, time efficient, but sometimes mm -hmm. I'll do that with background vocals because mm -hmm. I don't do any of my own background vocals anymore. I, I have before, but like for punk rock, it kind of like I want a different voice in there usually, right? Yeah. Um. So yeah, I'll I'll just sing. This is what I think it should be, or whatever, and then somebody else can sing over the top. Chris can come in, or Tom, or whatever, but. Like I said, Tom doesn't like it. So some people aren't into that, but I love that. And then with the reverb on top, maybe I'm just hiding that's from cool. myself. But <laughs> <laughs> No, man, whatever works, that's great. No, I mean, for most of the stuff I do, like, you know, I'll have people do, you know, a handful of takes, probably like, probably like four to five takes at least of each, you know, of each section. And I usually go section by section. Yeah. And, uh, and then I know when I have that, I've got my doubles already. Mm -hmm. And so move on and I'll comp later and then I'll make the doubles from the ones I don't use as the main comp. And right. that's, that's usually how I approach doing doubles. Um, and so then I have them anytime I need them. Do you always do doubles as a habit um, it, or? No, I mean, it depends. Uh, like some voices I've gotten into some things too, where to really make a voice just like sit nice in the mix, I'll actually do triples but I like pan them and the, and the triples are real low. So you don't actually hear it as doubles. Right. It just kind of like makes everything like a little fuller. And like when you take them off, it's like, oh yeah, the voice sounds really naked in the middle. But when you put them on, it's like, it doesn't have that double effect, but just everything's sounding that's, really full. That's interesting. That's an interesting it, way to do it. it I've it's never a little done science that. Consumed, but <laughs> yeah, I've done triples. Like I think I did triples on before everything and after that record. But uh, that was like in 2000, 2001, somewhere in there. So it was a long time ago since I've done triples. But uh, I have to try it. Maybe maybe it'll work. I, and I have that, I don't know if you know that uh, program Revoice Pro. It's no. like a it's like a doubling program essentially. So okay. it, it, it makes it so you're like, all right, here's my lead vocal. Here's my double, make them match. And like in an instant, it makes the pitch and the timing line up as much okay. or as little as you want. Okay. And that's so, cool. so that makes it a lot easier. It's like, I have my main that I like comp and I'm very meticulous with and make sure it's like nice and natural. And then when I'm doing that stuff where it's like, you know, it's not something people are hearing the, the details of, it just adds to an effect. I, I put it through that. And so I can instantly have these doubles and triples that work and I don't have to think about them. And so, yeah, it's, it's cool. It's something Where'd I, where doing. do you learn a lot of your techniques? I mean, these days. Um, I, you know, it's all just kind of like a snowball of what did I do last time? And then I'll start there and then, you know, it never works. You always are like, oh, <laughs> you always have to before. tweak it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, so then you tweak it and then it grows from there. And that's, I feel like mostly in the past couple of years, it's just been me growing upon what I've been doing which may not be the fastest way to get better, but it's been, it's been working for me. Yeah. I think, I mean, honestly, I think everybody, each in, unique individual, you know, you, you are you and people like what you do 
And if you knew everything, maybe they wouldn't like what you do, you know? So it's like, there is, <laughs> there's like that, the governor of uh, knowledge, I guess, that we all have, but maybe it's not a bad thing to not know everything, right? And when I you feel need, that. Yeah, I was going to say, when you need to find something out, you just go and figure it out. Totally. And, and, and it's funny because I feel that way a little bit with my mixes these days. It's like, I'm not the greatest mixer. But I think that's why my mixes work in a way with punk rock, especially is that I'm trying to do really good and I'm not, I'm not great, but I get it to a point where it's, it's, it's goodly, not perfect. Right. <laughs> that right. makes sense. You know, like, yeah. like if I, if I got better, it'd probably be too much and be like, it sounds too clean and too over the top. But I feel like, all right, I'm in a good place of like happy medium of knowing what I'm doing, but not being like, a master to where I'm getting it too clinical. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Makes sense. I mean, we all, I mean, we all, maybe not all, but <laughs> I was going to say like, I used to listen to like records like ACDC back in black and go, you know, this isn't the way MXPX sounds, but this sounds amazing. Like if we could sound mm -hmm. like this, but the punk rock version, you know, like that, that would run through my head. And it's because, you know, those productions were just, they were out of control. Like they would do things that that people do now, like with a click of a button, then it would take them a week to set up, you know? So like they yeah, were taking totally. the time to really do that. I don't know. I, I think I'm at the point where I'm kind of like a mix between the two. Like I love the experience of trying things organically and, you know, trying things in analog, so to speak. And then also it's kind of cool to be able to know and have that, that uh, peace of mind to go, Hey, we can fix it in the mix, <laughs> yeah, totally. you know, or we can change it if we don't like it later is, is more the sentiment of, of what I mean. Cause we're not, we're not necessarily letting things go, but yeah, but, uh, yeah, I yeah, mean, that convenience is nice. For yeah. Sure. I mean, if I want to change a lyric, that's still possible. Like, you know, months later or, you know, as long as you don't like somebody like Kanye was really when mixing the record the night before it dropped. Like, I don't know if I can believe that exactly. That can't, how is that true? How is that physically possible? But, but just the idea of that is cool. It's like, wow, he's mm. mixing the record la like right now and it's dropping to, you know, that's you think cool. he'd learn too because cool he idea. keeps changing them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's like, maybe you should sit it with it for a second. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, I mean, things do take time to percolate for me anyway you know if i just write a song and there's the song it's a different song than if i write it let it sit think about it tweak it bring it to the other guys record it you know totally that being said this screeching weasel record it didn't percolate for very long which is fine yeah, I mean, but yeah you know it's well <laughs> it's been i mean some of the songs had been written uh he did write a good handful like right before we started uh, but yeah, I don't know because we'd finished recording that one. Man, it'd been like what almost two years now, so I don't know. It, it sat for a minute, I think, before we released it. So, I don't know, it's not <laughs> as fast as back in the old days when you know they were releasing the record every year, which is crazy, yeah. But it yeah. is fast for these days for sure. That's right. Hmm. Well, are you guys gonna do another uh rejects record? No plans at the moment. Uh, man, it'd be nice just to play some shows. But yeah, <laughs> we're yeah. also like not in any rush to put ourselves in any kind of harm's way. And, you know, seeing how everyone else is having to cancel tours, it's like not even worth trying, I feel like, at this point for us. Yeah, I think the tours thing is rough because, I mean, you're gambling so hard with, with all these things you can't control. And mm. For that reason, we have two shows booked, and that's it so far. Nice. And, and so we're going to see how the experience goes. I think it'll be equally important not only to just do the shows, but, you know, and, and play shows for, for the audience, but also just so our whole band can see what it's really like. And then we can kind of like assess and, and decide what else we want to do. Yeah, totally. So, yeah. But it is, it is insane. And I think. And I think when it comes to records, you know, when you're when you're ready, you kind of know. And mm -hmm. you guys have been around a long time. You've put out a lot of records. You know when it's being rushed. So it's like, 
there's there's a weird thing that happens that like it almost can happen without being planned like mm-hmm. all it would take is is you know those guys to come with a couple songs hey let's do a single let's do this let's do that and then all of a sudden you're making a new record like what just happened you know like things like that <laughs> have happened to me for sure so yeah totally yeah that's great i mean you guys are a great band and and i'm glad that Thanks. that uh you still want to do things even if you can't do them so <laughs> totally yeah and you know it's like we still we still get along and whenever we're together it's awesome but yeah unfortunately we haven't been together in a couple of years now yeah 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 well you know i mean that just gives you lots of time to make these these uh punk rock records that so yeah. many people are going to be enjoying already are enjoying but yeah i wonder i wonder um the uh, the streaming landscape is fairly stable right now, but what's going to happen in the future? I don't know. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, but uh, but I think bands are are kind of realizing like let's just make something happen. Um, and it's not always touring. And what I mean by that is just record, m- write new songs, uh, collaborate with with other bands, other artists, which you're clearly doing. I mean, how many records have you played on? in the last couple of years, you think <laughs> even just oh, a man. little bit, you know, like one song, probably yeah, a lot, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Doing a lot of, and you know, just all the producing stuff. I always end up throwing something on there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but. Ex- exactly. I don't know. I like that. I, I, I like, I liked being, being part of that Screech and Weasel record last year. Uh, I was, I, I helped write a, a few of the, a little bit of lyrics, for uh, the last Goldfinger record and got to sing on that. That's, you know, obviously I'm in the band, but but still, it's John's band. It's not my band. So it was cool to still be included where he clearly doesn't have to have me on the record, you know? But I think I think that's the point is like, the point is just like, let's get together and make something that we couldn't make by ourselves in our room. Yeah, totally. So what's the yeah. setup, uh, what's the setup like down in, is it Norman? Oklahoma or you oh, live in Edmond? Edmond, yeah. Edmond. What's the it's like setup? north side of Oklahoma City. Okay, okay. Uh, it's near Oklahoma City. Cool. Yeah. Um like the recording, like studio wise? Sure. Or anything. Anything crazy you got going on. <laughs> but yeah, we can start with the studio. How long have you been oh, how long you been in Edmond? Are you from, born and raised, or are you Um, I was born in Houston, lived there until I was sixteen and then moved here and then have just been here ever since. Uh, aside from touring and not whatnot, too, not <laughs> too crazy of a move. I mean, as far as like the weather goes, it's it's a little different, but it's it's not that different. No, for sure, it's definitely definitely the same region. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah. So, so <laughs> um, you, you arrive in Edmond and got into punk rock. What happened? I mean, um, I was already into punk when I lived in Houston. Okay, um, but coming here, it was cool because it was you know, obviously a smaller amount of people into punk, but more of a scene, it felt like. Because I was out in the suburbs in Houston and just, I don't know, we had to drive into the city to go to shows and it just, it didn't feel like a scene when Mm -hmm. I came here. It's like the whole city went to shows, you know, and they're at American Legion halls rather than like real clubs. And So there was more of a community with aspect, I felt once I moved here. And so that was nice. And, uh, and I just always have, I've really enjoyed it here and, you know, everyone else has moved out of Oklahoma and, but I don't know, I've always, I've enjoyed it. Never left. Never yeah. don't really have a desire to. Man, I've always found that people from Oklahoma were really nice, like super nice, overly nice. I mean, and I, I find the same thing about Texans too, but more so Oklahoma people, just so nice. You included, I guess. You know, but, <laughs> yeah. <geez. laughs> there, there are a lot of, yeah, just good folks. Yeah, yeah, good folks. Even, you know, uh, my buddy Stefan, Stefan Edridge, you, you know Stefan Edridge, yeah. probably. Uh, he lives in Tulsa, and like him and he, he's not even from Oklahoma, but he's so, like him and his family, oh, they're man. so nice. Like they fit, they fit Oklahoma. Nice mm-hmm. people. <laughs> dude, he is, yeah, one of the nicest dudes. And the, uh, uh, the what is it the um hansen brothers oh yeah i've oh. never i've never actually met them but yeah they're from tulsa yeah yeah nice nice guys interesting yeah so anyway but uh so you got you got the recording set up you you did you move with your family by the way or to, to yeah Oklahoma? okay 
yeah, my dad had gotten a job here. And then it's funny because then they ended up moving back to Houston yeah, <laughs> later on. This place is weird. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my mom was always – she had never really lived anywhere but Houston. So uh, she was like, no, I want to go back. Yeah, that makes <laughs> sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, so I, yeah, just got a studio play, set up in my house. Um, just do it all the living rooms, the live room. Um, and one of the bedrooms I use as a control room and yeah, That's it's great. Crazy. Cause then bands can just crash in the other spare bedrooms. And yeah. It works great. So it's like, you don't have, do you have like sound treatment up or is it kind of, yeah. is it permanent sound treatment like built in or no, no it's no, no, definitely, no, okay. it's, and it's not perfect for sure. Uh, that's okay. Like, I mean, do it. That's cool. That's better. It's better that it, you, you know, that it's just put up f as needed. Yeah, and it and it, it works great sound wise. Uh, the like as far as getting sound, like recording sound. Yeah. Like, uh, bleed is is definitely an issue. Like, um, I'm always wearing headphones, or else I I'm hearing it bleeding through the walls. And, right. So I wish I wish I had better isolation. But other than that, everything, yeah, it works great. No, never had any complaints. And uh, yeah, yeah. There's, there's always there's always something you can fix in a studio. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. It's like it's it's if it's not that, it's going to be something else. And so, I, I usually look at that as like when something's happening, and yet we're still recording and it it's working. I go, hey, it's getting down on tape. Let's just keep going. <laughs> we'll fix that later. Totally. But yeah, I mean, I I feel your pain though. But it's cool though that you can have just your house be your studio, and you can move things around. You can change things if it's a different kind of sound. You can add more deadening, and mm -hmm. uh, that's the best of both worlds, right there. Yeah, so pe totally. people travel in, huh? They, they they just drive their vans through tours, and well, now it's just straight to Oklahoma. Yeah. 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 You know, because, you know, uh, often go people go through here to drive to Dallas, yeah. you know, or to St. Louis, Kansas City. Like, we're always a stop in the middle. So, uh, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. It's fun. What do you do? What else do you do besides, I mean, music stuff? I mean, is there anything else going on? Not eat, eat sleep, watch a show. That, you know, I, 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 I buy a lot of records. Like, okay. Yeah, every right. hobby I have is pretty much centered around music, which That's is very right yeah. one dimensional. But <laughs> where do you, where do you, what's your setup for buying records? How do you buy records? Oh, you know, I love going to record stores more than anything. So you're going to actual physical record stores? Yeah. Okay. I, you know, that's, yeah. Like where's, if I ever go anywhere else, where's your favorite record tour, store? Oh, man. Favorite. Uh, Double Decker in Allentown, Pennsylvania. That place is always amazing. That's cool. Like, uh, like I buy a lot of old hardcore and stuff, and like they have. <laughs> it's like how yeah. stuff in Allentown, Pennsylvania, of all places. That makes and, sense, uh, actually. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's not far from Philly and stuff, but uh, but yeah, like on tour, that's what I like. I wake up and. I'm in the and yeah, that's, that's awesome. I've, I've always, ever since I was a kid and stuff. is there just some lifelong and that's like your your uh toy aisle like going to the yeah. toy section it's going exactly. to the record store yeah tom's the same way tom our guitar player constantly buying right. records there's a record store right down the street from the studio here and it's like it's in a tattoo shop it's called speakeasy records and it's it's uh it's just a guy that loves vinyl but he owns a tattoo shop so he like put up a little one of the little rooms is is the record store and so tom will go over there and and buy records now and again which is that's great awesome. because it's like that's if you grew up doing that you want to continue doing that it's like kind of it's one of the things we can do as adults that we used to do as kids that is not frowned upon right? <laughs> yeah, totally but uh yeah there's a psychology to it i i bet i i i would imagine for me I like I like buying records, um, but I don't know. I'm just too busy. I'm too busy with, with song. Like, what do I like doing now? I like writing songs, but that's not what I do necessarily. Like in my, fr I guess I would do it in my free time. But yeah, I'm kind of like you. There's not a lot outside of music that I'm like super into because I make videos sometimes, but 
that's all usually based around music and the band <laughs> and all that. I'm not out here like bird watching. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> well, there's no, not that there's anything wrong with that. that. <laughs> <laughs> well, bird watching or only doing music things. Like, yes, yes. I mean, you know, it's it's it, you know, there's a reason we got into doing what we do. It's what we loved and. Like, who says that you have to move on from that just because it becomes your job? Right. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. That's true. I like love it. The fact that we do still love it enough to be our hobbies on top of our job. That's great. Yep. So there's nothing. You, so you don't watch any TV ever or movies oh, or. I mean, I do. I, I definitely like going to movies for sure. I'm the AMC, Stubbs, A-List. <laughs> yeah. Thing where I can go to, you know, three movies a week. Uh, so no, I do. I like you know, I consume that stuff. Though I am, I don't know, TV. I'm way behind on stuff. I have it. Yeah. I don't know, years ago, for some reason, I dropped off, and just I'm always like, ah, you know, I need to watch that. Yeah, but I mean, if you're not, if you don't need to watch TV, why watch it, right? Mm -hmm. um, I find that it's something you, you, that I do with the family. So like, if I'm with nice. the family and like. We, you know, we play and stuff together too, but like, you know, let's face it, you know, after a while you just want to like chill. Um, and so like, I found like I use TV, I try to use TV as like actually just something we do together, like experience it together. And then, and then also I've talked about this a little bit on the podcast, but I use TV at night and I'll watch like 15 minutes or maybe a half hour at the most of either a TV show or a movie or whatever. It doesn't, it almost doesn't matter as long as it doesn't like make me anxious because mm -hmm. I'm like doing it before bed to like get the song ideas out of my head. So they're not like <laughs> constant. Uh, that's kind of how I use TV, honestly. And, and in that way, I don't necessarily always watch everything I want to watch because I, I want to know about this, you know, I want to watch this YouTube thing, but like, no, it'll make me, think too much so i can't watch that right <laughs> now. so i don't get to watch totally. the things i want to watch but <laughs> and the thing with like series now is it feels like such a whole season of something <laughs> it is a big Which, commitment yeah i and i don't know maybe it was like because i used to watch i don't know what it is yeah these days it's like i always feel like i've got something else like yeah that'd be great but i could be doing this i could be working on this or there you go yeah something. i mean uh, that's that's not a bad vibe to have because a lot of people don't have that drive and they just would rather watch TV than do work or whatever. Like I said, everybody's uh, you know do your thing, but having that drive is is amazing. And whenever it's like me and naps, you know, I'm like so tired, and then I like anytime I try to take a nap during the day, I just literally lay there and think about what I got to do, and so I yeah. can't nap. And so I just don't try. So it's like similar to that, I think. You know? <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I like I stick to the flagship type shows. Like I, I watched uh, Ozark and I watched, uh, you know, of course, you know, um, of course, of course. Like lo back in the day, Lost, you know, that series. I didn't start it right when it started. But like once it was like everybody's watching this, I want to know what happened. You know, I want to know what's up. I watched that, you know. And so uh, – but yeah, these days you can't keep up with that because there's so many different shows and there's different streaming services and you know maybe you you can pick one show that like on Netflix or whatever that everybody's watching like uh, what Squid Games. I watched that. I watched that before it was popular. I just thought it looked cool. So they pegged <laughs> me apparently. But <laughs> Nice. But have you heard of Squid I, Games? Yeah, I haven't watched it. Uh <laughs> You know what? That was something I did watch something on Netflix. The first show I've watched in a while was that uh, School of Chocolate. Have you seen that? It's oh, like a reality, well, like no, sort I haven't of like watched it. A competition kind of baking, cooking. Yeah, it's like constructing thing art with chocolate. And I don't know. I'm a sucker for those kind of shows, and I, so I got sucked awesome. to that. Yeah, I love the uh, Alaskan like outdoor shows you know where it's like i'm by myself in alaska or in in northern canada and the and i'm you know it's 40 below getting firewood fishing hunting like all this like survival stuff and i think it it stems because one we're, everybody that's in the city here kind of like wants to know what it's like to, out in the woods but <laughs> but uh i was reading you know a, a series of books 
uh, Gary Paulson. Um, his most famous book is called uh, Hatchet. So I don't know if you've heard of Hatchet, but it's about this 14 year old kid that is in a plane and the plane goes down in northern Canada during the summertime and pilot doesn't survive spoiler alert uh but he figures out how to survive and i'm just like i was reading that book like just like like it was nothing and 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 it led me to like read all these books about alaska about dog sledding you know and uh and so i think now because of that i'm hooked on these like alaskan shows not hooked i mean i've watched a few of them but <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yeah i know sorry it's a, it's all about me right now <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, I don't do, I mean, I guess I read and stuff. Yeah. I think about, Let's... there's like little things I, I do a lot. Like I, I run and walk a lot too. Okay. And so I guess I listen to a lot of podcasts. There I, we're getting to it. To so you, you're not only doing just music, you're listening to podcasts, which is very good. I mean, I listen to a lot of podcasts as well. You're on a podcast right now. Um, mm -hmm. you... <laughs> but, uh, running, that's something we could talk about because, I've ran, I've ran off and on my whole life, and right now I'm, I'm in the, at the beginnings of starting to run again. Like, uh, I see it happening. But, what's your thing? Like, what's your kind of routine with, with that? You know, just a few times a week. Um, and I don't know. I just, I started like in my early twenties, and because I, was, I need to lose a few pounds, and I've just kind of never stopped. And like every day, I, I also like at least walk a few. Months even if I don't run and even okay. if I do run, um, so like are, you, I, every are you running morning, outdoors or on treadmill? Um, outdoors until it gets too cold and I have a treadmill. Nice. Okay. But yeah, like I, I don't enjoy the treadmill as much, but it's there when I need it. <laughs> yeah. It feels like you're working harder on the treadmill just mentally, I think. Yeah, exactly. Cause when you have those numbers in front of you, it's like harder to just get lost. And, yeah. And that's what I like to do is just put on music, not think, that's why, like, people are like, you should do yoga. It's like, man, there's too much thought in yoga. Yeah, that's I the wanna, hard thing. Yeah, like, I just want to be able to, my exercise, to not know what I'm doing. You know, <laughs> like, right, me I'm too. running, but I'm not thinking about it. Right, it's gone, and I've already done it. And a lot of people say that's cheating because you need to feel <laughs> the mental anguish <laughs> of, of trying to hit the wall, trying to run. But uh, I don't know. I guess I'm not serious enough about it. But if if you really truly want to train for like outdoor survival, things like that, I think that's where you need to not listen to music. You need to not have mm -hmm. that that crutch, so to speak. Although, like I, I agree with you, uh, and I think it's because you know if you're in a life or death situation, chances are you don't have your phone uh, luxury of streaming some music while you're running down the street, <laughs> right? And so it's yeah. like, okay, I get, I get the both schools, but since I'm just trying to literally f be healthy, mm -hmm. let's just, let's just get through this. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I, I have no faith in myself to survive anything. So I just, <laughs> Oh, come on. <laughs> I definitely am a, a creature of modernness that, yeah, I would not do well in well, we outdoor we all are. We all are. I mean, I am too. Like I talk, I love watching outdoors. It doesn't mean I would survive. I am the first person to put on a jacket inside. Like I'm always cold. It, it just doesn't matter. But um, we've, yeah, we've definitely gotten a little, a little soft as a society in general. Like we're not really taught to go outside when it's raining. My kids, they go to, they go to forest school two times a week. Um, and what that basically means is it's not even like regular school. They don't, they're not learning math or anything, but they're more learning about nature. But really, I think the the overall thing that they learn is no matter what, you go to school and you, you go experience this. If it's raining, put on your raincoat and your, your rain boots and all that. Uh, the only time they had to cancel was when it snowed like two feet and nobody could get there. But that was just <laughs> literally because of the cars. But you know, you, you, you just serve, you just go no matter what, like if it's a rainy day, it doesn't mean it's a bad day. It just means there's rain and it's wet. Mm -hmm. And I find myself struggling with that so many times I'll look outside and go, it's raining. Uh, but then it's like, well, who cares? <laughs> what is it? You know, it's got to rain. Rain's good. But, um, mm -hmm. yeah. So, I mean, 
I, I guess my point is I'm glad that they're getting some exposure to the elements where I never did as a kid. Like, mm. sure, I, you know, I went and played soccer outside and, and things like that, but but I'm pretty comfortable in, in the uh, indoors <laughs> here. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Like, as a kid, I played outside a lot, and I always think that's so strange now. I feel like I rarely ever see kids out doing stuff. You know, right. like when I was a kid, we were always – going through the woods and whatever you know like it was all about not being at home and uh i always like look around and like the rare times i see kids walking down the street i'm like holy shit there's kids <laughs> out doing something which is awesome but it's it's funny it's such a different people have just changed like i, I have friends who have like teenagers now and they're like none of them want to get driver's license and i'm like Whoa. that is crazy to me like that was the thing we all wanted to get a license and get the fuck out and do something else. And they're all like, no, they just want to sit in the room. They have no interest. And yeah, it's, I think it's, it's, it's the internet, right? Like we didn't have the internet. So we're like, what are we yeah. here for? <laughs> totally. It's like, yeah, there was boredom to fill. And I guess now there's not boredom. <laughs> yeah. It's so crazy. I mean, I, I mean, everybody adapts, right? We all adapt to different things, but I'm hoping that, I'm hoping that I'm more addicted to the phones than my kids will be, you know, because maybe they grow up with it. It's like, it's like in Europe where, where kids aren't barred from going into a bar. Like they can go in, you know, there's probably like, okay, you're way too short. I'm not giving you a beer, but they'll give, they'll serve teenagers alcohol and it's not a big deal. They drink wine at dinner now and again for special occasions. And it's, it's not a big deal. So like, I'm thinking maybe, maybe it won't be as big of a deal to these kids that grew up on iPads and grew up with YouTube and YouTube kids and all these apps. And, and it's kind of just like, yeah, that's one thing. And there's also this. Now yeah. I realize I'm probably being very naive in saying that <laughs> and we're already just screwed, but uh, <laughs> as a society, but um, we'll see, we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy times. Sorry, I'll keep talking while you swallow that drink. <laughs> Sorry, I got a piece of ice. <laughs> no, 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 you're good, you're good. Well, what's what's coming up? What's what do you see? What do you see happening for you in the future? Oh. And if you don't want to obviously spill it like yet, that's fine. I, I almost feel like this timing on this podcast is way too early to be talking about the Screeching <laughs> Weasel record, but you can revert to this and maybe we clip some stuff out for you in the future you can um, promo it or something <laughs> <laughs> no i mean yeah i actually i don't even know when the weasel record is actually coming out but sometime in this coming year there's gonna be a new screeching weasel and there's talks about maybe playing some shows in the fall which i might play with them which would be fun wow um, awesome awesome yeah i have to get my downstroke hand nice and uh in shape but uh that and then uh, yeah, Vulture Wake record coming out at some point. Um, Rejects just last week we repressed Move Along, but it sold out like in a couple of hours. So Jeez. that was kind of surprising. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, so, and nice though. And yeah. so we're gonna do more of those though. So and we're repressing a bunch of our stuff. Um, so awesome. Yeah, that, that's that's all what I've got lined up. Do, are you repressing through the the original label that it was on, or are you doing it just on your own? Yeah, we're we're licensing it through, and then we have a friend who has a label called Dark Operative. Okay, um, okay, licensing, and, got it. Yeah, so licensing it from Interscope, then doing it ourselves like that. So awesome, awesome. Yeah, we just, we just did a box set last year and had. To oh yeah, I saw it. that. Yeah, it was insane. So much work to get all those the legal stuff done and. Totally. Insane. Yeah. It's but it's funny because it's like. <laughs> Uh, we'll talk this stupid shop that probably bore people, but like Doghouse, like we were on Doghouse before we were on Interscope, and Doghouse for a while had the rights to our first three records on vinyl, and they just kept pressing it, and so we licensed this to do these, and then they pressed another thing and move along last oh my year, God. and we're like, what the <laughs> fuck? We have the license, and it turned out they haven't had the license for like ten years, and they've been pressing the records, and like. And it just goes to show, like, Interscope doesn't fucking know who has no, what. Or they don't know what's it? going on. Like, oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, and bands are always so worried about, and which you kind of should be, because, you know, what? If, if you do get caught and get sued for doing something like that, like, let's just press our own record without licensing. 
yeah that's a lot that's a big big chunk but uh yeah. but you're right they don't know what's going on they don't know who <laughs> owns what there's they, they have too big of a catalog mm-hmm. and, and and when we went back to him with like hey we have this since this is happening it was just like a big shrug like that they didn't even like try to think about it. it's like well fuck it that is that because is that because like business today is like just do it until you get sued or or I guess so. and then when you get sued it's not you don't have to pay as much as what you just made i mean it's kind of how it goes with the pharmaceutical companies and the the oil oil companies they just do whatever yeah. they want and they just pay the fines that are less than what they just made mm. there's me being cynical again but yeah <laughs> but uh i'm I mean, glad that it's probably not well, I heard that uh, vinyl sold more in 2021 than CDs for the first time ever. Vinyl sold more than CDs, which makes sense. I mean, there's not a lot of people buying CDs or making CDs. And it was the highest year since SoundScan started. So even higher than 91, which is wild to think mm. about. That is wild. Yeah, I think, you know, I think it's, uh, I mean, it's never going to necessarily like grow bigger than it is now because it just can't really like it's kind of got a limit maybe that's what makes vinyl so collectible is Mm. it's really hard to get made it takes a while to get made it's it takes a lot of money it takes a lot of time and effort there's only so many so many plants and adels in in most of them (laughs) (laughs) clogging it up and uh so yeah maybe that's it maybe that's it you know me i just i guess i haven't i'm probably just saying things that are obvious to people but i haven't really thought about the vinyl thing in depth lately but uh i mean i think there is something to the just the effort and time and money like the fact that no one can just go and press a record like easily like you can just go burn a cd i think there's there's always going to be something to that and people give more credence and more love to something that they know you can't just be instant and disposable you know yeah i mean the same goes Um, for music producers you know people that are you know for a while there everybody was trying to make their own records us included uh and there's a lot more work involved than you realize it's like there's there's a lot (laughs) of time and effort that goes into this and having some other experts involved definitely helps so people i think people realize that more than ever nowadays you know which is why you're constantly busy right you probably have if you don't already have the whole year lined up, it's probably just because you don't want to commit. You know, it's like, hey, chill. Oh, we'll figure it out. Don't worry. <laughs> I can't. I can't understand yeah. people, and it's probably my personality. But people that have the next two years of tattooing appointments filled out, or whatever it is they do, right? It seems to be tattooing a lot. Uh, I'm just like, what? What if something really good comes up, and you're just like, sorry, I got a tattoo appointment. Uh, you know, like it seems like those. <laughs> That's kind of how I feel, though. I, I don't like to be trapped, and it's probably wh- also why I'm a musician and why I've toured most of my life. And I just like to move. I like to move along. So sorry about that. <laughs> Play on words. <laughs> That's all right. No, I'm the same way for sure. Yeah, I, you know, I, I would like to commit to something, but yeah, I don't want to. Like, I want to make sure I have time to breathe and know I'm ready for the next thing before the next thing. That's healthy. That's like, healthy in living, line, right there. <laughs> yeah, because it's super, and you know, with especially with recording, man, it's easy to burn out, yeah. and so you got know, to pace yourself and make it keep it fun. Absolutely, yeah. I, that's something that I, as an artist, need to realize about people I work with is like they're doing the same thing every day with different artists, and every artist wants their thing done ASAP. Every artist, why wouldn't they? Mm. I want mine done now too, you know. But uh, having some patience, realizing, okay, you know, this takes some time now. There's plenty of artists out there that are, you know, you work with somebody and they're, they're terrible. Like they just, they're not, they say they're going to do the work and then they're not actually doing it. Like, yeah, I get the, <laughs> now we had a bus driver. This is my last, <laughs> we had a bus driver. We, it was in, he was in Dallas, Texas. We flew to, we were starting a tour in literally East coast. Like it was either Philadelphia or Chicago or somewhere. It was not Chicago. It was further. It was like way East philadelphia or somewhere and he's like yep all right i'm on my way and then like then he should have been there that night we're like hey where are you at he's like oh well i didn't quite get going we're like what you haven't even left like you told us you were on your way <laughs> so 
you know, it's just, Dude, yeah, crazy. just like, <laughs> what? So we had to like get a hotel and, or get a hotel for another night. We had a hotel already, but just, just communicate. Don't tell people you're on your way when you're not actually on your way. <laughs> that always totally. sticks with me. It always. And he's a great guy. <laughs> otherwise, like nothing wrong with him, but he's, his excuse was, um, somebody stole the refrigerator out of the bus like what i don't know <laughs> he's like i had to go get a new refrigerator and da, da, da. <laughs> all right let's just do this tour <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, amazing. you come across all sorts of people on the road right you know <laughs> just yeah crazy people especially bus drivers man there's a lot of yes good bus yes drivers. now and again you get a clean cut company man but almost never almost never <laughs> <laughs> and that's what makes it interesting totally and you know yeah it takes a personality to do that yeah, job yeah yeah <laughs> well dude we've uh this has been great thank you so much for taking the time anything else you want to get out there let us know but um cool yeah man thank you for having me on i appreciate definitely. it definitely uh you can everybody can follow Mike at uh, on Instagram at Mike A A R. Is that the right? That's the yep. one you use mainly. And then of course yeah. the rejects. Um, and then do you have Twitter at all? Yeah, same thing. Same thing. Awesome, like awesome. Yeah. Cool, cool. We'll uh, we'll get you on there, mm -hmm. dude. Thank you so much for taking the time. I uh, appreciate you. Uh, now I feel like we've known each other a lot longer than we really have, but uh, this is like our really <laughs> so only conversation. <laughs> but, but uh, I feel like we have so many like friends in we common do. too, like just like like uh, Red City guys. Like I know mm -hmm. you know them, and yeah, there's just all these Stefan the people, and somehow we haven't hung yeah. out much. It's funny. We will, and we'll do, we'll do this again too. Come on the podcast anytime. All right, Mike. Cool man. All right, Let's cheers. Talk later. Bye.